It's morning on Mars. The sun is 140 million miles away, but strong enough to send current flowing through the solar panels of the rover called Opportunity, waking it up for another day of work. At the same moment, the sun is setting on the other side of the planet, and the rover Spirit is shutting down for another long, cold night. The two explorers have been on Mars for almost five years. Spirit landed three weeks ahead of Opportunity in Gusev Crater, a hundred mile diameter basin that scientists believe once held a Martian lake. But on the ground, Spirit finds no evidence of water history. Every rock appears to be volcanic lava. I wouldn't have wanted to admit it at the time, but the Spirit landing site initially was a crushing disappointment. If the evidence they're looking for has been buried, they might find it exposed in the walls of Bonneville Crater, some 400 yards from the landing site. But when Spirit finally pulls up to the rim two months after landing, there's nothing inside but more lava. We hoped for something a little more spectacular than this. I'm going to be surprised if we decide to drive down into the crater. We might, but I don't know. Spirit was just seeing nothing but lava as far as the eye could see. And uh, the Spirit team got a little disheartened after a while. Even so, many on Spirit's team embraced the role of the underdog. People just got emotionally attached to their rover. You know, I'd tell them, well, you switch to opportunity. And they'd say, no, no, I'm not going to. Because they had gotten their heart set on spirit succeeding. Opportunity was certainly the lucky rover. But for me, I worked on spirit. And spirit is my favorite rover, because spirit had to work for everything she ever got in her life. The best chance for spirit to salvage its mission now is a mile and a half away in the Columbia Hills, a two-month journey four times farther than the rover was ever expected to drive. Squires thinks it's the best option, but the engineers are dubious. I remember he said that. This is where we're going. What do you mean, you're gonna drive up in those hills? This is gonna be a lot more than 90 days. Good luck. We're probably gonna die on the way there. He said, no, we're gonna go. That's okay. You're driving, you've got the keys. Good luck. After an eight week, mile and a half trek through a desert of broken lava, Spirit finally reaches the Columbia Hills. Evidence of water may be on the upper slopes. The summit is just 300 feet above the crater floor, but it's a monumental challenge for this rover. She's already driven three times as far as she's supposed to be able to drive and lived twice as long as she was supposed to live. If you imagine you've driven your car 300,000 miles without taking it to a gas station, and now you've got to climb Mount Everest with it. But most ominous is the approach of the first Martian winter, which no one expects the rovers to survive. The seasons were changing. Spirit is in the southern hemisphere of Mars, and what that means is in the winter, the sun is going to go low in the northern sky, and it's going to get lower and lower and lower. And as it gets lower, the amount of power that we're going to get from solar arrays is going to get less and less and less unless we can do something. They could solve the problem and possibly survive the winter by tilting the solar panels toward the sun to get more power. Well, we didn't build a tilt mechanism into the rover. The only way to tilt them towards the sun is to tilt the whole rover towards the sun. But the beauty of it was, now we had a hill. If they can find a route that keeps the solar panels tilted toward the sun, Spirit might be able to survive the winter and climb the mountain at the same time. 